All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're going to be making a set of integral table stops for my little machine shop 3990 mini mill. If y'all have seen some of my previous hidden tang knife builds, you will have noticed me using clamps and steel cutoffs to rig up table stops on my mill during the guard slotting process. For those of you who do not have a digital readout on your mini mill, this saves you from having to count the tick marks on your dials. If you do have a digital readout, these stops are still handy since all you need to do is set them up once and then cycle the table back and forth without worrying about overshooting your dimensions. One of the nice features about the Little Machine Shop 3990 Mini Mill is that the table has a rail built into the front of it which will accept T-nuts. We will be using this rail to hold two adjustable stop blocks. I'd like to note here that I got the basics of this design from a website called Academy of Legardo, which I'll put in the description below. In addition, I'll have a free set of plans down there that I drew up in Fusion 360 after completing this prototype build. The first component we need to make is going to be the center stop bar. This stop bar will be bolted directly to the stationary section of the x-axis. The adjustable traveling T-blocks that we are making later in the video will be contacting this bar in order to stop the table. The scrap steel that I will be using for this component is around 3 8 of an inch thick, 1.8 inches tall, and 1.4 inches wide. The two holes need to be drilled approximately 24 millimeters apart to a diameter large enough to accept a 4 millimeter bolt. The 3990 mini mill already has these holes drilled and tapped. I counterbored these holes to around 8.3 millimeters in diameter in order to accept the cap head screws. I was able to rough in the shape with my belt grinder and then brought the piece over to the mill in order to get the contact areas square and parallel. I'm sure this can be done prettier, but in my case, I was shooting for function. Now that we're done with the center stop bar, we'll move on to the traveling stop blocks. I'm going to be making these out of a scrap piece of aluminum that's around 2 inches long, 14 millimeters wide, and 1 half of an inch tall. The T-slot will be milled to a depth of around 3 millimeters, which is 0.12 inches. The width of the part of the T that enters the rail is around 5.8 millimeters, or around 0.23 inches. I'll be eventually drilling two holes on each of these blocks to accept M5 fasteners. However, at this point in the build, I was planning on drilling just one hole. I came back and fixed that to allow for more clamping area on the traveling stops, since the table screws have the potential to apply a significant amount of force to these blocks. Now that these components are machined, we can get into the hardware. I was able to find a set of T-nuts on Amazon that just so happened to fit the 3990 rail. The purists could have made these pieces as well, but I decided to hit the easy button. I also ordered some stainless steel M4 and M5 cap head fasteners, along with an assortment of metric washers. As always, I'll put affiliate product links to these items in the description of this video if you want to support the channel. These fasteners are obviously too long and I purchased them with the intention of modifying their length. The target length of the M5 screw will be 20 millimeters, and the M4 screw will be 12.39 millimeters. Once the fasteners are modified, we can install our table stops. I start off by using a pair of needle nose pliers to position the T-nuts in my mini mills rails. Then I carefully install my aluminum traveling stops with the M5 fasteners. Take great care here to make sure that the T-nuts stay centered in your rail when tightening. Next up is installing the center stop bar. This one uses the M4 screws along with the pre-drilled and tapped holes in the 3990 mill. Since this component is made from mild steel, I made sure to coat it with some non-detergent 20 weight oil. To set the stops, I push the traveling block up against the center stop bar and then tighten the two M5 fasteners. After doing so, I decide to test out the stop with my digital readout set to a resolution good to the 10,000th of an inch. You can see that the stopping position is pretty darn consistent with this arrangement. For the guard slotting operation I mentioned at the start of the video, I would need to use a stop on both ends of the center stop bar as shown here. And real quick before we get to my final thoughts, I want to show that these components have the clearance to be left in place on your mill during normal vice operations as seen in this clip. All in all, these stops seem to be performing very well and I look forward to using them in my next hidden tang knife build. To me, this is a much cleaner method to setting up table stops than the table clamping arrangement I was using before. However, it's worth mentioning that if you're using a lower tier Sieg X2D mini mill, this front rail arrangement will not be an option. It seems like these stops may be worth manufacturing for someone in the future with the popularity of these mini mills. I also want to give a shout out here to Mr. Carl Anderson for demonstrating the table stop clamping method in his YouTube channel, which has some extremely inspiring content. 
So as always, if y'all got something out of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support the work we do here at Redbeard Ops, you can do so by using my affiliate links in the description or becoming a patron on my Patreon. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.